Good morning. I'm Rick Cotton, Executive Director of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, and this is an exciting day for us. So what do you think? <laughs> So uh, this morning, uh, I will make a short presentation. Uh, then we will invite uh, Queensboro President Melinda Katz to the stage. We will then have Jane Garvey uh, speaking on behalf of LaGuardia Gateway Partners. And then the governor will come to the podium. I'd like to begin with acknowledgments. First, I'd like to acknowledge Vice Chair Jeffrey Linford of the Port Authority. <laughs> and his fellow commissioners, Licia Eve and George McDonald. <laughs> Queensboro President Melinda Katz. <laughs> Assemblyman Jeff Aubrey. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited. <laughs> Uh, Assemblywoman Carmen De La Rosa, and New York State Assemblyman Clyde Vanell. Uh, we also have uh, our very important colleagues here from Organized Labor, uh, Mario Salento, President of the New York State AFL-CIO, and Vincent Alvarez, President of the New York City Central Labor Council. And, and here I would like to pause because this building, as well as the entire project, is being built by all of our brothers and sisters in organized labor. And I'd like to thank every single one of them who built this concourse and who are working on the new LaGuardia Airport. Uh, let me also recognize and say thank you to Jane Garvey, George Casey, Magnus Erickson, Marlon Smith, and Stuart Steves, and the entire team at LaGuardia Gateway Partners, who are overseeing both the building and the operation of this concourse, as well as the entire team from Skanska Walsh, who has put in long, long days working on the construction of this concourse. All of I'd also like to acknowledge all of our airline and concession partners here with us today, including Delta, which is building a new Terminal C. I'd also like to uh, thank and recognize for their hard work Huntley Lawrence, Rich Smythe, and Lisa Scully, and the entire Port Authority staff. Finally, I'd like to welcome members of the governor's administration, the governor's airport advisory panel, and particularly to the local community leaders who are here with us today. So, just three years ago, Governor Cuomo unveiled a vision for a new LaGuardia airport. He did it in the, president, in the presence of Vice President Joe Biden, who had famously called LaGuardia third world. As with any Governor Cuomo project, things took off from there. The governor's vision was to construct the first totally new airport in the country in more than 25 years. And that is precisely what we are doing. Perhaps our greatest challenge is to keep the airport fully open throughout the construction process. And open it is. LaGuardia is not just staying operational. It is literally handling record numbers of passengers every single month. How does this happen? The airport never loses capacity because no old structure is torn down before there is a new one to replace it. These new gates that we are unveiling today create capacity to allow us to tear down old gates immediately to the west and construct additional new gates then in their place. No one has ever tried to do as much as we're doing in as short a period on such a small footprint. It is an $8 billion construction project that tears down a full airport and replaces it wholesale. Today, we mark a major milestone. After breaking ground just two summers ago, today we are celebrating the opening of the new LaGuardia's first new gates.
But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Let's put this new concourse in the context of the whole airport. Today's concourse will be just under 10% of the floor area of the airport facilities that we are building. Here's the rendering on the screen of the footprint of the entire new airport. Note how the entire integrated frontage of the new airport has moved forward closer to the Grand Central Parkway. We are currently in the first new concourse at Terminal B, highlighted in the rendering toward the middle of the slide. Next to be completed will be the expansive arrivals and departures hall for Terminal B. You see it toward the upper left of the rendering. That is the large building that you see most prominently under construction today from the Grand Central Parkway as you drive by, with new access roadways being built immediately in front of it. It will open in the first half of 2020. Then will come the equally large arrivals and departures hall on the eastern end of the airport as part of Delta's new Terminal C, which will open in 2021. You see the pilings for this new large structure already rising from the ground across the roadways in front of Delta's current terminals at the eastern end of the airport. And you see this arrival and departures hall at the lower right in the rendering on the screen. The central hall and connecting concourse between Terminal B and Terminal C will complete the airport's integrated facilities along the Grand Central Parkway. The two new air train stations, one serving the central hall and one serving the Delta Terminal on the eastern side of the airport, will also be a part of the airport's integrated frontage. And five gate concourses, in addition to this one, will open in phases as they are completed throughout the construction process with substantial completion of the new integrated airport targeted for 2022. The new LaGuardia will have 2.7 million square feet of passenger facilities, 72 new gates, and more than 13 miles of brand new roadway network. The roadway network will be simplified with far superior signage and many fewer traffic lights. As I noted earlier, the airport as a whole will move much closer to the Grand Central Parkway. That will expand significantly airport taxiway space, allowing aircraft to arrive and depart from gates much more efficiently, reducing gate congestion and gate delays. The airport will have state-of-the-art security, and common use gates will make the airport operate much more efficiently than it does today. The most dramatic new structures will be the two new large arrival and departure halls, one opening in 2020, as I said, and the other the year after. They will feature the airport's signature dining and retail offerings, and overall will place LaGuardia in the top rank of 21st century airports. Now let's turn to this concourse, the one you're currently in, which will open this weekend. We all entered through a temporary walkway from the old terminal. When the Terminal B arrivals and departure hall completes in 2020, passengers will access this concourse from a glass-enclosed sky bridge over an active aircraft taxiway with dramatic views of both the airfield and the New York City skyline. Passengers will descend from the skyway down two banks of escalators into this concourse. The second set of escalators will rise above the ones behind me and will be built as part of the new Skyway construction. This concourse has 250,000 square feet of passenger space with 18 gates and more than a dozen concessions. The food, beverage, and retail amenities that you see throughout the concourse will open on Saturday. You'll have to come back to sample their wares on your next trip. Gate delivery will be available for all food options. Retail choices will range from toys to books to duty free. As a grandfather, I can also tell you that the FAO Schwartz store is sure to be a hit with the kids. And I want to apologize in advance to all parents for the tantrums when the flight departure is called. You can peruse the history of LaGuardia and explore exhibits featuring New York and Queens in the large waiting area under the stairs. And speaking of Queens, the airport redevelopment project is paying close attention to the community every step of the way. We have just passed the $1 billion mark in UNWBE contracts issued in connection with this terminal.
and we have awarded $330 million going to local Queens businesses, and we're nowhere near finished yet. We are out in the community providing regular updates. We are funding scholarships for local students, and the concessions in this concourse behind me have hired Queens residents for more than half of the jobs. We will continue this community effort throughout the project. Saturday will be the opening day with 11 gates at the far end of the concourse becoming operational. The seven additional gates, which are at the end where we are now, will open as soon as the adjacent old concourse is demolished over the next few months. Build new, knock down old. This concourse will serve American Airlines, Air Canada, Southwest, and United. We could not be more pleased that Joe Biden's third world LaGuardia is tangibly on its way to becoming a thing of the past. Today's celebration represents real, tangible progress that everyone can see and experience. For us, it also symbolizes our momentum as we build a whole new LaGuardia Airport worthy of New York. Now with that, I'd like to introduce someone who has been absolutely integral to the success of this project, the extraordinary Queensboro President, Melinda Katz. I will make sure not to bring my children through Terminal B for FAO Shorts. Thanks, Rick. Uh, Rick Cotton, ladies and gentlemen, Port Authority. Hold on one second. Everybody's very big. There we go. This is an exciting day for the Borough of Queens, right? It's an exciting day for Queens. It's an exciting day for New York. Today we are taking another step forward to transform LaGuardia Airport into a 21st century transit hub for Queens and for the entire region. I want to thank Governor Cuomo for his leadership. New York is rebuilding everywhere you go, but here in Queens, we are rebuilding a facility that was deteriorating. And New York and Queens are once again building for the future. It has a national reputation. It had a national reputation for the deteriorating context and the deteriorating place that it was. It was awful. And let's face it, Joe Biden pointed it out, but we in Queens and we in New York always knew it was awful. And Governor Cuomo came in and said, we deserve better for our state. But as the Queensboro president, I want to point something out. We are now going to have a first-class, top-rate airport that will be nationally known and internationally known all over the world. But make no mistake about it, LaGuardia Airport, as Assemblyman Aubrey always points out, is an airport in the middle of a neighborhood. I mean, literally, in the middle of a neighborhood. And so the balance of that is always challenging. The balance of making sure the neighborhood concerns are dealt with, the job hiring is dealt with, the employment issues are dealt with, while still being a national example for the world to see as the leading uh, state in the entire United States. New York did that. Governor Cuomo, thank you for that. Now, I had the privilege of serving on the governor's airport advisory panel, and it delivered a comprehensive vision for redeveloping LaGuardia Airport for the 21st century. Our focus was on putting passengers first and improving their experience, but also ensuring that a new modernized LaGuardia would be a good neighbor for the people of Queens. And the new Concourse B is an important step forward to fulfilling that vision. I'm also especially excited about the display in the new Concourse, telling the story of the home borough of LaGuardia, our borough, the governor's home borough of Queens. Now, Governor, we all love this borough. I know you love this borough. So I saw the, um, you know, the, the, the Queens portion there. We are going to make that bigger and better. We know that it's an example, but when people get off the airport and off the airlines, they should know they are in the borough of Queens. And that is going to be an exceptional display by the time it is done. But you know what? We have an administration that understood that it's in the middle of a neighborhood in Queens. 
And so we want to thank you for that. We are bringing jobs to the borough. We are bringing concessions right here that reflect the diversity of the borough of Queens. We have brought employment and all that goes with it. And so I am especially excited about today, but I'm even more excited at how the future of LaGuardia Airport will set the example from throughout the country that we are a first class state in New York. So congratulations on today and thank you for all the work that the state has done here in the Borough of Queens. Now, it is my privilege to welcome LaGuardia Gateway Partners board member and former FAA Administrator Jane Garvey to the podium. Thank you. Oh, it's slippery. You were right about that. See, this is perfect. I'm following the borough president, who's uh, just uh, set up a nice little, uh, a nice little platform for me. So, first of all, thank you all for being here, and thank you so much for for participating in what I think is an extraordinary day. It is really a pleasure uh, to celebrate with all of you the progress we are making to build a reimagined LaGuardia Airport. You know, when this airport was built 50 years ago, and you can see some of the pictures uh, as you come in, uh, it was a different era in aviation. But even then, even then, LaGuardia was viewed as a linchpin in the United States aviation system. It was a critical link. And the importance of this airport has only increased with the passage of time. So the transformation into the governor's vision of a unified airport is significant, it's important, it's historic, not just for the city, for the region, for the state, for the borough, but it's significant for the country as well. As Rick Cotton pointed out, it's one of the most complex airport construction projects in history. I think it is really the most in history. Here at Terminal B, we have an incredibly small footprint, as you all know. We're building in front of, next to, and even over the top of an existing airport while keeping the existing airport operating. We're still coming in. We're still taking off and landing. You know, I remember one of the first times that the, I heard the governor speak about these kinds of projects, projects as complicated as this one is. And he reminded us of something that I think is very important. He said that the beauty and the potential of projects like these lies not just in the engineering excellence, and we're seeing that for sure, but rather in the crucial role it plays as serving as a gateway to our communities and as economic engines for our, for our economies. As a board member of the LaGuardia Gateway Partners, it has been a pleasure to be part of this historic project. Uh, we are building, as the rural president said, a completely new airport that will be a world-class leader in innovation and serve at, as the gateway that New York so rightly deserves. And as we look around today, and as you take a look and walk around, this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. This beautiful new concourse is a shining example of the progress we're making here and what's in store for the entire airport. Here at Terminal B, we are redefining the guest experience and bringing the best of New York into the terminal. On behalf of the uh, LaGuardia Gateway Partners, I want to thank Rick Cotton, Pat Foy, who I think is here, who uh, preceded Rick, uh, and his team at the Port Authority for working so collaboratively with us at each step of the way. I'm going to go off script for a minute. I will say, as George Casey reminded me this morning, the call we never wanted to get. This is Rick. Be in the governor's office tomorrow morning. <laughs> Plenty of those calls, but it all worked out. It was terrific. It was terrific. And again, thank you to all of the employees, everyone who is making LaGuardia a reality. There are over 5,000 employees who work here in Terminal B, from the airlines, the concessionaires, TSA, and of course, our magnificent uh, maintenance and custodians who have worked tirelessly to get this terminal ready. The thousands of construction workers, there you are, it's great. 
who are working tirelessly to build this project. Our MWBE subcontractors, you folks were awesome. Uh, the teamwork that I've seen, that we've all seen and uh, witnessed, has been second to none. Now I have to say, and it pains me to say this, but I have been in transportation for over 30 years. You're supposed to say hard to believe. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. Thank you. But I've learned one very important lesson. No project, no public works project in this country has ever succeeded without a champion. And I know I speak for my partners at LGP and for the thousands of men and women who have worked so tirelessly on this terminal. We are profoundly grateful to be part of this extraordinary historic project and grateful to the governor for his bold vision, his leadership, and his eloquence in articulating the importance of investing in infrastructure in this country. It is a model for the nation. Thank you, Governor. Governor Cuomo. Thank you very much, Jane Garvey. Let's give Jane a round of applause. Wow, wow, wow. How great is this, isn't it? I am excited. Uh, to uh, Rick Cotton, who's done a great job, and the whole team at the Port Authority, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> to the borough president, who really stepped up to the plate, and she helped us get this done, and the entire airport plan. She also made sure it delivered for Queens $1 billion in MWBE. I don't believe that's done, been done ever before anywhere on any government project. <laughs> Jobs for Queens. <laughs> to the elected officials who were here, my colleagues from Albany, Jeff Aubrey, Carmen De La Rosa, Michael Dendecker, Assemblyman Clyde Vanell, thank you guys. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs> we also lost a colleague in Albany who was a great supporter of this project, uh, the late Senator Jose Peralta. And let's give him a round of applause because he was a true friend. To the men and women of labor, we know this is built, and we know it's built right and quality because labor built it. Mario Salento, Vinny Alvarez, and to all the men and women who built it. I want to show you a couple of tiles in the back that are a little out of line, but we'll fix that. Uh, I want you to think about something while we're here today and when we leave, because this is a great day in and of itself. Uh, but I think the significance and the power goes beyond uh, just today. You know, LaGuardia Airport is an icon for New Yorkers. Uh, if you grew up in New York, you've been here hundreds of times, picking people up, driving past it. Uh, Rick Cotton and I were in Washington yesterday with the president, and we started talking about LaGuardia, and he started to ask questions on LaGuardia. And he knew the layout with such specificity. It was really amazing. We started talking about the Central Hall, and he said, well, is that on what side of parking lot B is that? And is it on the west of Delta? And I was a little taken aback, but if you're a New Yorker, you've been here dozens, hundreds of times. And uh, the power of this example really goes beyond today because LaGuardia is a metaphor. It's a metaphor for the infrastructure in the state. It's a metaphor for the infrastructure in the nation. When Joe Biden made that comment about LaGuardia landing in a third world nation, I got calls from other colleagues, and they said, you know, we're going to sign a letter condemning the vice president. I said, condemn him for saying what? Well, he said LaGuardia was like landing in a third world nation. He insulted New York. I said, yeah, the only problem is we're going to condemn him. It's true. And that's a problem. And we actually pivoted off that statement. 
The king has no clothes. The king had no clothes. This was an embarrassment. And you ask yourself, how do you go from a place where Fiorello LaGuardia, a great New Yorker, says, I'm going to build an airport. It's going to be the best in the United States of America, 1939. One year after it opens, it's the busiest airport in the country. It's state of the art. It's the best. That was LaGuardia. And then you go to a point from state of the art innovation to 2016, where it's an embarrassment. How, how does that happen? How did you go from that boldness and that creativity and that leadership to a place where the facility is an embarrassment? It's a facility designed for 3 million people per year. We now have 30 million people going through it. How do you go to an infrastructure in this city, this state, this country, that was a leader on the globe to a point where we have 100-year-old train tunnels and 60-year-old bridges and 80-year-old stations? What happened? What happened to that? That innovation, that leadership, that spirit, that can do, that's with the best. How did you get from there to here? Well, it's, it's hard to build. Yes, it's hard to build. Rick Cotton and I have had this conversation many times. It is hard to build a new airport while you are operating an old airport on a postage stamp in the middle of a neighborhood, in the middle of New York City. Yes, that is hard to do. Uh, and they've done an extraordinary job, and let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> well, it's hard to do because it's controversial. And politicians nowadays run away from controversy. There's a new adage for some politicians. The politician who does nothing, does nothing wrong. Yes. Politician who does nothing, takes no positions, doesn't make enemies. That's true. I believe the politician who does nothing, does everything wrong. Because you're there to make progress. You're there to get something done. But. It takes a special type of politician who is willing to step up and actually take on that challenge and say, I'll take on the opposition. Because there's opposition no matter what you do. It's not about merits. There's opposition no matter what you do. If you say you want to plant a, a tree in the middle of the Grand Central Parkway, you're going to have protesters against the uh, site impediment on highways. Whatever you do, there's opposition. But real elected officials stand up. They deal with the negativity and the opposition. But they find progress, and they find a way to alleviate the concerns. That is Melinda Katz, and that is Jeff Aubrey, and that is Jose Peralta, and Michael Dendecker, and Clyde Vanell. Let's give them a round of applause. Well, it's hard and it's complicated. And private sector companies don't want to get involved because you have to go through the Port Authority, then you have to deal with the Department of Transportation, then you have to go to the FAA on the federal side, and you have to do an environmental review, and you have this whole alphabet soup of agencies. Yes, it's complicated, it's hard. But you can find extraordinary companies like LaGuardia Partners and Jane Garvey, who step up to the challenge. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and by the way, it's not the fact that it's hard. That is why we're not doing it. Because it's always been hard. This is a letter from Fiorello LaGuardia, 
to the airports that are going to be, airlines that are going to be involved in the airport, okay? And he writes, this is the last call on the matter of the runway layout at the new airport. Thursday, February 3rd at my office, City Hall at 2.30 o'clock. Come prepared to make any suggestions or forever hold your peace. I have heard some groaning about the present layout, which I know is not justified. If you have any cockeyed ideas on tangent runways that have not yet been tried out, keep them for some other time. I am willing to hear constructive criticism and to receive helpful suggestions. I cannot compete against white tablecloths with soft pencils. Everyone who gets two drinks under his belt is now designing runway layouts on restaurant tables. We will have a map here. Our consulting engineer will be here, and I expect to have the matter finally, completely, and definitively settled. You may bring anyone you desire from your engineering, technical, and piloting staff. Lawyers cannot contribute anything. <laughs> this is not a legal matter. Very truly yours, Fiorello LaGuardia. <laughs> so my friends, it was always hard. It was always hard. And for those who may say we hated getting summoned to the governor's office, you are just lucky you didn't get summoned to Fiorello LaGuardia's office. But it was always hard, except we had a different attitude. We believed in us, and we believed in our capacity. And yes, we saw the obstacles, but we had an innate sense that we could overcome those obstacles. And that innate sense of confidence was built on success. It was not delusional. We had built the best of everything. Everything that people said couldn't be built, we did. George Washington Bridge, Verrazano Bridge, Brooklyn Bridge, 600 miles of subway underground. Nobody on the globe had done that aqueduct, fresh water system that came down from the Catskills. There was nothing that we couldn't do because we believed in us and we saw it over and over and over again. Somewhere, away the, somewhere along the way, we lost that confidence. And now when you see the obstacles, we get nervous and we get scared and we back up. And we say, well, we don't know that we can do that. The obstacle is too high. We don't know that we can achieve it. We're afraid. We don't have that confidence. I don't want to fail. I'm nervous. We have to restore the confidence, and you're not going to do it with rhetoric. You're going to do it with results. You're going to do it by showing the people of this state and this nation we can do what we've done in the past. We can overcome these obstacles. They said it can't be done, but we do it. And that's what building a new Tappan Zee Bridge was all about after 20 years of wringing our hands. Can we do it? Can we not do it? We did it on time, on budget, beautiful, efficient, effective. We did it. And you build on that success. And then you say, we're going to build a new second and third track on the Long Island Railroad because it hasn't been improved in 80 years while the population has more than quadrupled. And we're going to end the hell of Penn Station and we're going to build a new train station across the street, the Moynihan train station, and it's going to be state of the art. And then we're going to take the Javits Convention Center and we're going to double the size of the Javits Convention Center, opening a, opening a million and a half square feet. And and then we're going to build a new Kosciuszko Bridge and a new Gothels Bridge. And we're going to go to electronic tolling and then a new Rochester Airport and a Syracuse Airport and a Plattsburgh Airport and an Ithaca Airport. And you do it. And people say, wow, we can do these things once again. Maybe we can. And then they start to turn positive rather than turning negative. And this is a snapshot of that. This says, yes, we can. 
the way Fiorello LaGuardia in 1939 said, yes, we can. LaGuardia today says, yes, we can. First new airport in this country in 25 years. <laughs> they're building all around us on the globe. You land in international airports, and they're all state of the art. They're magnificent. And we haven't built an airport in this country since the Denver airport 25 years ago. Why? Because we didn't think we could. The new LaGuardia Airport says, yes, we can. And the best is once again in New York, and New York once again shows the way forward for this nation. If we can do it here and set the example, you will see the nation follow. And that's exactly what we're doing. Thank you, and God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the program. Have a great day.